Hey Brandon, it's me Zach and we're back with another video here um, to help you learn more about Pokemon or I guess more so when you're playing your Picarom deck against other available decks in the game. So in this specific video, I'm going to be going over a deck profile of what Blacephalon GX Naganadel is in the format. It's a pretty popular deck and I'm sure you must have faced first one um, before. I know that we've actually even played this matchup. So I wanted to go over the matchups that you've played, the matchups that you're likely to see at your League Cups, your League Challenges, and any other events that you go to playing against your Picarom deck. So it's a good idea to know exactly what decks are available in the current formats, and we'll see exactly what's up with them. So let's just jump into it so we can see how this deck works. So this deck's main attacker is Blacephalon GX. It's a normal two prize card Pokemon, and it has three attacks. Now against your deck, they usually want to use Mind Blown to discard to Lost Zone enough energies to knock out your Tag Team GX Pokemon. Their goal is to either go Mind Blown twice to knock out a Pikachu Zekrom GX and a Raichu Alolan Raichu GX, or they're going to go for Burst GX to discard one of their prize cards, so they have five left, knock out a Tag Team GX Pokemon, and then use Naganadel GX to snipe one of your Dedenes on the bench with Venom Shot for 170 damage. So this deck can be quick, quick and aggressive because it has a lot of ways to draw cards, attach energy, and it can do a lot of damage very quickly. So basically, their best starter is this Pokemon. If they don't have enough for Mind Blown, they're either going to be using Bursting Burn or Burst GX. Like I said, they could be using Burst GX to try to um, get two knockouts with Mind Blown, but regardless of the case, they're either going Mind Blown, Mind Blown, or Mind Blown Venom Shot with a Burst GX somewhere in the mix. Um, they could use Bursting Burn against you, so it might be a good idea to hold on to a switch or to be able to retreat your Pokemon. Because if you're burned, you're going to take damage in between turns and confuse, you have to flip for it and you might not be able to attack and you might take damage. So that's one thing you got to definitely watch out for when you're playing against this deck. Um, next up, they play the Dene, similar to your deck. They don't have any lightning energies, so they can't attack with Static Shock or Tingly Return GX, but they do use Dead A Change to draw more cards if necessary. Um, next up, we got Poipul. So Poipul is what they use to evolve into their Naganadel or Naganadel GX. And it depends on exactly what they're looking for. They're quite often, they're not going to be using Spit Poison unless they're in a bad position. So if you see your opponent using Spit Poison, again, just like Bursting Burn, you could always retreat your Pokemon to get out of a status condition or play a switch. You So if they're using Spit Poison, they're probably not having a great game. And depending on what they're looking for, whether it's energies or to draw cards or attack, they're going to evolve into Naganadel or Naganadel GX. They're going to evolve into Naganadel to use Charging Up. You can attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon, and that gets enough energies or extra energies in play to be attacking with Mind Blown. So the more Naganadels that they have in play, it they can get the they can get energies. So a strategy that I'd recommend is make sure that you're looking through your opponent's discard pile so you can see how many energies they can get with charging up. So when you're trying to knock make a decision on what you could do with your turn, you want to go with something that means that you're not getting knocked out with mind blown or that you're okay with getting knocked out with mind blown. Next up we have uh, Naganadol GX. Um, so they're going to be using this to draw some cards. Um, they discard an Ultra Beast card from their hand, and you can see um, right under the HP it shows all the Ultra Beasts that they have. So Ultra Beast, Ultra Beast, Ultra Beast, Ultra Beast. So they have quite a few in the deck that they could discard, and that will allow them to draw three cards with Ultra Conversion. As I've said, if they're using Venom Shot, it's likely to knock out one of your Dedenes on the bench. And they can quickly power this Pokemon up with Beast Ring or with Welder, because this deck also plays Welder. 
Um, in very rare circumstances, they can put on a Beast Energy Prism Star. Beast Energy Prism Star counts as all types of energies when it's attached to an Ultra Beast, and they do an additional 30 damage. That doesn't matter for Injection GX. They can add a prize card from your opponent's discard pile into their prize card. So interesting kind of concept there. I personally haven't used this attack against Pika Rome. I don't think there's enough time in the game, so I wouldn't worry too much about Injection GX. I'm more so saying that it exists. So when you're trying to attack their Pokemon, as you'll see in the next video, the best strategy when you're playing against this deck is to avoid activating your opponent's B-String. Your opponent can only play B-String if you have three or four prize cards remaining. So that's if you knock out one of their GX Pokemon, basically. If you knock out a Blacephalon GX, they can use B-String. So a good strategy for you to use is to hit Blacephalon GX with full blitz for 150 damage, power up the energies to your Picarom, and then bring up another Blacephalon GX with no damage on it and attack them with Tag Bolt GX to snipe both of them. Sometimes this list will want run a Mew, which can stop that. So the Mew that I'm talking about is the one right here. I'll show you really quick, just in case it's either this Mew or this Mew, the same exact Mew, just different art. <coughs> and that would block your Tag Bolt GX. So it's something for you to watch out for um, because that would stop your Tag Bolt GX from hitting on the bench. And so that's basically your big strategy when it comes to that deck. They have other cards in this deck too. They have Acrobike, which is used as a consistency card for their deck. They can look at the top two cards and maybe they'll get something like a B string in their hand and discard a fire energy. If they discard a fire energy, they're gonna bring the energy back with charging up. They have B string, so as we went over, they can attach two basic energy cards from their deck to one of their Ultra Beast, any of their Ultra Beast. It, it could be Blacephalon, it could be Poipol, it could be Naganadel, or it could be Naganadel GX. Another consistency card that they have is Cherish Ball. So this is a card that a lot of decks play, so I'm sure you you know exactly what this one does. It searches for a GX Pokemon. So they could search out Naganadel GX, they could search out Dedenne GX, or they could search out Blacephalon GX. They have Mysterious Treasure as well, so they can discard a card from their hands, and again, they want to be discarding Fire Energies to power up Naganadel for charging up. Um, and they could search your deck for a Psychic or a Dragon-type Pokemon. So basically anything from their Poipol, Naganadel, or Naganadel GX lineup. The biggest thing that you got to worry about when you're playing against any deck is Reset Stamp, which is a new card from Unified Minds, and you play this in your deck too. Your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck, and they draw a card for each of their remaining prize cards. So it's one of those things where you got to really be careful when you're knocking out Pokemon. Now your strategy is to draw four prize cards at once, and you'll see that in the next video um, when we play against that matchup. It's uh, It works out pretty well like that. Um, I'd recommend that you have a Jirachi on your bench with an escape board for when your opponent plays a reset stamp. So if they knock out their po your active Pokemon and then play, resets, or pl really play reset stamp and knock out your active Pokemon, you could send up a Jirachi and then use Stellar Wish to try to get more cards. Because Pokemon is so much more fun when you're able to play cards. They have Heat Factory here. So another one of those things, discarding fire energies from your hands and you can draw they can draw three cards and they're trying to get more fire energy in the discard pile for naganadel so they might bump your stadium they do play four stadiums in this deck so it's one of those things where between the one heat factory and three ultra space you got to be careful when you're playing your thunder mountain prism star you want to make sure the moment that you're playing it is the turn that you want it to count your opponent will likely try to counter that stadium as soon as you play it on their next turn. So just be prepared for that, that you're making playing it on the right turn and that you need it to attack that turn. Don't play cards for no reason. Ultra Space is basically you get to search through your deck for an Ultra Beast card, reveal it and put it in your hand. So since you don't play any Ultra Beast in your deck, um, you can still search through your deck and you can see if you have any important cards prized if your opponent plays an Ultra Space against you. It's definitely one of those things where they can you can look through your deck and be like, what are the important cards? 
Right now, ask yourself, what are the most important cards you could be grabbing out of your deck at any point? What, what could you be searching for? In most cases, you're probably going to say, do I have my Tapu Koko Prism Star? Do I have my Thunder Mountain Prism Star? Do I have a lot of lightning energies? Do I have my Pika Roms? Most of your Pokemon are actually super important. Do you have Zerora that will allow you to get your free retreats? Think about the cards that are really important in your deck and then maybe just like search for them with Ultra Space next time your opponent plays them. Plays one down. Um, so Ultra Space, like I said, can search out any of their Ultra Beast Pokemon, Poipole, Blocephalon, any of the Naganadel or Naganadel GX. Next up here, they got two copies of Cynthia. So they're just playing this to shuffle their hand and draw more cards. Um, pretty typical supporter. A lot of decks play this. It's a really common card. It's not really affecting you. Um, it's just merely a Cynthia. And Welder. So attach up to two fire energy cards from your hand to one of your Pokemon. If you do, draw three more cards. So they're going to be using that to power up their fire energies. And they're going to try to get some damage for Mind Blown. So earlier I was saying, can will they have enough energies from what they have in play during the game with Naganadels charging up and what they have in play already? But you do also have to watch out for Welder that can get two more fire energies in play at any given time. So when you're trying to see if your Pokemon's safe, maybe you don't want to go full blitz right onto your active Pikaram. Sometimes you want to do it to the benched one, or sometimes you're going to have to play into B-String. It's one of those things where your hand and what you draw is going to allow you to make those decisions. It's basically, you just got to think about what your opponent can do on their turn so that you could try to have a better chance to win against them. We've already went over Beast Energy Prism Star a little bit before, but they can attach it to any of their Pokemon, even at a Dene, but for Ultra Beast Pokemon like Blacephalon, it does an extra 30 damage. It doesn't really matter because if they lost zone five energies with mind blown they are going to be doing 250 damage but if one of those was a beast ring or a beast energy prism star they'd be doing 280 damage so that could be really relevant if they're knocking out a dedene with three energies so three fire energies would be 150 damage but two fires and a beast energy prism star would knock out a dedene at 180. same thing with raichu and alolan raichu gx they can do five energies with a beast energy prism star and they can knock it out for 280. So if they have a beast energy prism star in play, it is something that you got to watch out for because it kind of makes them need only one energy less. They have fire energies. They have 14 of them and they have one psychic energy in the deck. The psychic energy in the deck is to attach to the Naganadel GX so they can use Venom Shot. And even though their deck is mostly a fire type deck, they can search out the, the Psychic Energy with B-String and attach it to the Naganadel GX. So base, this is how the deck works. This is a really basic version of it. You might see some versions of the deck that decide to run Heatran GX. So if they have a lot of energies in play, they can use Burning Road to move them all to the Heatran, and then they can attack you with Hot Burn GX. There's not too many other texts that they'd really play in this deck. Some lists I've seen, um, they'll run Ditto Prism Star. So they have an extra Pokemon that counts as Poipol to evolve into their Naganadel and Naganadel GX. Sometimes they'll run three Naganadels. Sometimes they'll run three Naganadel GX. So decks can be slightly different, but the th thing for the most part is they're just going to be trying to mind blown two of your Pokemon and knock them out pretty quickly. So like I said, Big strategy in the deck is trying to avoid B-String by not knocking out your opponent's Pokemon. I can't stress that enough. You might not want to knock out your opponent's Pokemon because they can go B-String and power up a Blacephalon so quick. And when you knock out a two prize card Pokemon, then they knock out your Pikachu Zekrom with, th with anywhere between three to six energies attached. It hurts so bad. So like you'll see in the following video, I made that my clear strategy to go with Blacephalon GX, hit it for 150 with full blitz, power up my Pikachu Zekrom in the active position, and then double custom catcher up another Blacephalon GX and knock out two Pokemon at once to draw four prize cards. It's a really cool play and it doesn't necessarily matter in other matchups, 
but this is really the one matchup where it matters because B string, you do not want them to play one B string, two B string, three B string, or four B string. They can have a board fully set up and it doesn't matter how many prize cards you draw or how quickly you got it. They could be sitting on a handful of B strings and they could quickly win the game. I'd say that the matchup for you against a deck like this is pretty close um, in terms of it. It's probably a 50-50 matchup one of those matchups where you should probably win as many as you lose. Um, if not, it might be a little bit favorable for you. So maybe you'll win slightly more against the Blacephalon deck. No, don't let that get to you and don't take it for granted. It's one of those matchups where you can quickly lose if they got an amazing start. Between getting Welders, Poi pulls out, charging up, they can knock out their po your Pokemon very quickly. Another thing that you can do in this matchup is attack them with a Zapdos because they need three energies to knock it out with the mind blown. It takes them off their path of how they would normally try to win the game. So it seems like it's a really good idea to go in with things that make your game longer. It might not be a bad idea for you to attack with Zapdos. The last thing that I want to note about this matchup is they only have 16 energies and between discarding energies with the Dene, maybe not having out Naganadels, and other things, you want to make sure you know how many energies they have access to left in their deck. Maybe they discarded too many energies in their discard pile and they can't get them back. Maybe they mind blown so many energies to their loss zone that they can't knock out your tag team. Be aware of what your opponent has left. Look through their discard pile and see exactly if you can make a game plan to win the game. Um... So that's it for this deck. I hope that you understand exactly what I was saying. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in our next coaching session. I'd be more than happy to help you out there. Um, and the following video, it will showcase exactly how the matchup goes. So you could watch it, see exactly what I'm talking about in action. But this is a pretty common list. It's based off of Michael Burdrak's top 32 list. Um, super simple, super consistent. And you want to know what? Maybe when you're watching these videos, one of these decks is going to be, you're going to be like, I want to try that out. Pokemon is all about finding out exactly what you can do in the game. Maybe trying a new deck, learning things, making new friends. So if, again, if you got any questions about it, maybe you're like, Zach, I love this deck. It seems so cool. For sure. Let me, let me know about it. So let's jump into that other video right now and we'll see exactly how the deck plays out. All right, Brandon. Bye.